Hey y'all, this is Billy and Michelle at Permapastures Farm. And today is an awesome day, not only because of rain finally went away, but we got some sunlight, still cold, still windy, but we got these bare root trees in and it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Now, folks, if you go back and watch what we did a few videos back, I don't know how often, I guess we'll put a link in here of the pimp method of planting. And that means for, you know, planting trees. We talked about the planting part of it in that last video. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to put the imp in pimp today. <laughs> Meaning that we're going to work out the rest of that acronym and explain all the components that go in to planting these bare root trees or whatever tree you have. Because we do have some up there in pots that need to also get planted. But with that said, folks, we're going to show you how all of it comes together. Okay, the I and pimp. We talked about the other stuff in the last video. Okay, right here is one of my bare roots. This just happens to be an Arkansas black. And it's one of my favorites for a couple of reasons, not the least of which being of how long it stores, how, how it's basically a preparedness apple. And it only gets better and tastes better with age. So I'm gonna, let me slide my little um, tag up here a little higher. The white flags we have all represent where we're gonna put our productive trees. So folks, when you plant a bare root, and the reason why we favor a bare root over a potted plant Number one, it's 10 times cheaper. Not literally, but you get the point. It's considerably cheaper. And um, it's more, it's gonna be more, it's gonna be better adapted to whatever your soil conditions are than one that came in a pot and had certain soil conditions. Um, and in which case you'll have to rely on the worms to make that exchange for you. But the cool thing is these guys are small, they're little, they're inexpensive. And from experience, they outcompete the potted plants that we've planted in the past every single time in just a couple of years. So I'll just move my flag over. This is gonna come in handy because for temporary reasons, Michelle will come back and write on it. I'm just gonna dig a hole. I'll just kind of stick it up next to my shovel to kind of get some understanding of how deep I want it. So just kind of where this graft union is, folks, this part right here, I want it as high, at least four inches above the soil if I can. Because if this winds up going underground, you're gonna make a nightmare for yourself because if it goes underground, then your rootstock is gonna start sprouting all over the case, all over the place. And folks, I can't even begin to tell you the experiences we have with a person we know that has basically a rootstock orchard this day because he wouldn't listen and buried this thing underground. So you wanna make sure your graft union or where the, the, the scion met the rootstock, you wanna make sure that's well above wherever the soil is. So to, right about here, and this shovel is where I'm gonna dig. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side. So folks, I, I just wanna point out that this area that we're in by just dumb luck just happens to be where we put that Jeff Lawton instant garden last year. So instead of just having hard up nasty, well not nasty, but tough to deal with clay like this, in just one season, it's produced soil like this, where the worms are implementing all the wonderful things into the soil, so this stuff works. Anyway, our hole's deep enough, and um, so I'm just gonna kinda poke it in there, see how I want it to sit, and right about there's where the ground level's gonna be. Now, folks, it's important to recognize that you wanna know where your dominant wind is, because where this graft union is, you want it on the side where your most dominant wind comes from which is in that in our case it's that direction okay that way to this way so i'm going to put the graft union on the side that's essentially going to push back against the dominant wind so now that i got it here i'm just going to kind of this soil is actually kind of crumbly somewhat loamy in some areas so it's kind of easy to put back in there i'm just kind of holding it just fill this up. I'm not too concerned about it right now, but I have made it in a habit in the past that when I dig a hole, I do that method that Subkoviak does where you stick it on a piece of cardboard. That way you're not trying to break it out, get all these little pieces and crumblies out of the grass. So it's just easier to put it on some cardboard. We got plenty of space now between the graft union and the soil. Now this isn't where it's gonna stop. This is just the eye in pimp. Okay, now we're gonna put the mm in the rest of it here in a minute. So right now we're gonna go through, plant the rest of these, then we'll come back and hit the MP and pimp.
All right, so we're going back. We got everything planted. We're gonna say more than 30 trees right now. And we still gotta go back in a lot of places and go and add in our nitrogen fixers. Um, but here's our first productive tree, the one we started with. And this is the Arkansas Black. So folks, okay, P, I, M, now we're to the M, materials. Now materials in some ways really goes along with preparation. You need to know what you need to have. So here we got some compost that literally I walked maybe 15 steps back when we did the chicken tractor on steroids. We knew we were going to put an orchard here. So it only made sense for us to make it go parallel with where we want the orchard. So we can literally fill buckets or wheelbarrow, whatever we want, take a few steps and bam, it goes to work right here for us. So these materials right now, what's relevant in terms of materials is this cardboard, right? But there's a way I do it and it's a way we kind of devised where I'm just gonna kind of cut it down a little bit and I'm gonna cut a Y into it somewhere about the middle. Something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect. And all I'm gonna do is fold it back on itself like so. The reason I'm doing it this way, and this is from experience, um, I can put that away. Now what you could, if you wanted, there's no reason you couldn't just stack up cardboard around here and go with it, right? But this first one, whenever I, if I do have the opportunity, I always do it this way. And the reason why is I kind of fold up one side, can slide it along, and there you have it. And then I always put the opening on the downhill side. So if any water comes against it, it kind of gets stuck there, right? So the idea of doing it this way is your base cardboard always stays in place, right? So now, for my mulch ring all the way around it all i'm going to do is just stack up some cardboard i can stick it on top but i found out that it stays even better now also folks depending on the environment that you're in it's also important to note that you might want to wet this cardboard down really really well and soak it because we get such frequent rainfall here i'm not at all concerned about it so i'm just going to go and make myself what will be my future mulch ring all the way around here like so and don't be afraid if it's bigger than you think it ought to be because you know there's really no harm in it don't be afraid to go thicker with the cardboard than you think if you have soil that's somewhat alive believe me the worms are going to make that exchange for you There's a number of ways everybody's out there telling you a, a way to plant trees. I'm showing you the way I do it. And the way I got it was from Subkoviak and it's a combination of a, of a number of other people. So the most important thing is, is that whatever amendments you put it on the surface and you, you count on your worms to make the adjustment, to, to make the, um, to join things, to co combine them. Now this is our initial mulch layer, a quasi compost as well. And um, we'll come by and check it in a while. All right, y'all, it's the next day and it's beautiful. It's sunny and 40 degrees, but for me, that might as well be a heat wave. Okay, so we got all the trees in. We got all, well, for me anyway, it's a heat wave. Speak for yourself. <laughs> anyway, we got our mulch. We got everything covered. We got as far as basically putting the trees in the ground, getting the cardboard around it, and then covering it with the mulch slash compost. Okay, now we're to the point where we're gonna start adding our guild to each tree. Now in our case, every tree is going to have, let's say two blueberries in opposite corners roughly, that's on the outside. Those are the shrubs. And then also like some sea buckthorn and some other nitrogen fixing shrub in the opposite corners. So blueberries this way, nitrogen fixing shrubs on the outside of our mulch ring. Okay, now on the inside of the mulch ring, and that's just the start, folks. On the inside of the mulch ring is going to consist of what? So on the inside of the mulch ring, we're going to have daffodils, uh, four daffodils total, one at each of the opposite ends. And then we're going to do four garlic in the four other corners. And then we're going to do comfrey, two comfrey on the, on the outside of the mulch ring. Right. So it'll be on the... And folks, it doesn't have to be this way. Now, that's just a start. That's exactly what we're starting with. Now, there are others that think that maybe you should have a, a circle of garlic and let's say tulips and daffodils on the inside or daffodils specifically. And then on the outside, pretty much the same thing. 
it really doesn't matter. To, well, it does matter, but just base it on what, if you don't have experience at this, just follow the recipe of people like Subkoviak. There's a number of others out there that will give you their method for doing it. But in our case, what you've seen us do it in the past, we put a flag in opposite corners and then we'd go through and plant it. Because we have so many new people that are getting into this, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how we go about doing it. So trees in the ground, got the mulch covered, now we're ready to rock. What's first, honey? Okay, so we're gonna put our daffodils in. You're just gonna lay them out right now? Yeah, for now we're just laying everything out and then we'll go back we'll and lay out your garlic. put a bunch of soil, like dig our hole and put a bunch of soil. And then we're gonna put a garlic in each corner. So for us folks, it's daffodil, garlic, daffodil, garlic, you get the point. On down the line, we'll do, we'll do an inner ring, maybe an outer ring. It's like, you know, this is the president of the United States and this is his security detail around him. That's kind of how all this is gonna work, okay? So with that said, what's our next step? We got everything laid out where we want it. So the next step is going to be to dig a hole and we're gonna break through our cardboard just to get to the to the soil. The soil underneath. And then we're gonna drop a few handfuls of soil in there, put our garlic in, and cover it up. You know, these daffodils, they serve a few purposes, really. Number one, they're beautiful to look at in the spring. I mean, they're just pretty much the only thing coming up, right? So there's that, but they also have an awesome benefit where browsers like deer and some of the burrowing uh, mammals out there, they, are, they find these absolutely positively repulsive, but it was never enough. So we're gonna show you in the last part of that pee in the uh, protection, how this and everything else, like the fingers of your hand, work together. So that's for protection. The garlic has its own various sorts of protection. And you know what? Just like every other thing in permaculture, it has multiple uses, not the least of which being that we eat this every single day and lots of it. And we also feed it to our pigs. Um, I believe the sheep even get some and even the chickens to some extent. So we go through a lot of garlic and we go through a lot of the other things that are gonna be in this mulch ring. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead. I guess you can work that side, I'll work this one. I got a little bit of a different method. I don't use a trowel. I just basically uncover it. And then I always carry a couple of knives on me. You can use what works for you. I just take this razor blade, run it down through there, run an X, get through that cardboard, poke a hole through it. Then I put my soil in. I said I beat him, so who's more efficient? You got dirt on me. I don't have any soil. No wonder you beat me. I don't have anything to work you with. You haven't even gotten to the soil yet. All right, next up in line is our comfrey. Um, we go through a lot of this stuff. We use it for everything. We use it with the animals. We use it with the pigs, chickens, sheep. It doesn't matter. Everything loves to eat comfrey, at least around here. So we have our shrubs going on. Now, remember this mulch ring is something of a square. And there's a reason for that because it's easier to find your direction to plant your future stuff. So we, I pretend to like to keep things in a square because on opposite corners, let's say they're blueberries, which there will be. And then on these corners will be shrubs. They don't necessarily have to be nitrogen fixing, but it, it does help. But there's gonna be so many other nitrogen fixing things around here that if you don't get it every single time, it's completely fine. So now, Michelle's already done the comfrey on that end. I'm gonna put it in on this end, get it covered up. A Little bit of soil there. And so that's ready to rock and roll. All right, next up in the rotation, like I said, ideally in the past, we've always used nitrogen fixing shrubs and we still have some of those. Those are gonna go in later, but today we got some uh, what do we got here? We, well, I don't even need the tag. One is lavender, the other is rosemary. And we're gonna put those in opposite corners, okay? That's gonna be our shrubs over here and over here. We'll get those in and then we're just driving on with the gill. All right, next up. So we got some shrubs on the corners. We'll have some more in these corners. They're just not ready yet. Now, we had talked before about taking this blueberry and putting it over here in this corner. 
but with the benefit of being on site at this particular tree, you got to ask yourself, does it work? Now, there are some concerns among some of us here that if we put it here, it's going to be too close to the road. Vehicles may hit it. Or if we put it over there, these donkeys over here are going to get it, which they will. Um, so then we got to think about what are, what are our other options? Okay, so we got a tree here and a tree there. And does it make sense to go here? Yeah, it does. So that's where we're going to put it. And then we're going to put one on the next one. And then when we're able, when we're able to flank these trees where we have available space, that's what we'll do. All right, here we are coming to the end of it, at least um, for this portion of it. Now, folks, this is just a snapshot of all the things that are going to happen uh, before summer's out, probably before spring's out. Okay, so we got all these things in. We got our support species in. And over here, we got rosemary. We're going to have, remember, opposite flanking things. We're going to have our shrubs. And then inside here, a, ser a whole constellation of things. And we're only giving you a small snapshot of what those consist of. Now we're to the end in pimp, right? Protection. That's what it comes down to. So this bone sauce I made a while ago, remember that? Yeah. Heavens to Murgatroyd, this stuff still stinks after all this time. And that's what, exactly what it's supposed to be. So anybody that hasn't seen it, go back and watch. This stuff is the best deer repellent, in my opinion, in the world. We've tried it all, bars of soap, all the little tricks and nifty stuff. Nothing works like this stuff. So folks, in a nutshell, and you want to do this when the tree is dormant, we're going to take this stuff, and I got jars of it up there. This is just, I left it in the pot because this is the latest of the batch. All we're going to do, paint this stuff on here. And any browser that's coming along will find this absolutely repulsive. Now, the last time we did it, we did it on stakes. Okay, so you get the point. Protection, first circle of protection is going to be this stuff. The next is going to be this hardware cloth. Now, there's other stuff they make. I personally like this stuff. And Now, you want to make absolutely sure that the pokey side of it, you want it facing down for any bowls or anything else that might want to roll up in there. So I just kind of stick it around here. This also has another benefit. Is anything like, uh, let's say, a little Great Pyrenees puppy, when he goes up here to try to chew on this, well, that's what he's met with. Because if you think a little puppy can't destroy a tree, well, <laughs> he can. Well, anyway, Milk Boy right here, my little Pokemon puppy, this little guy here is going to be the most important circle of protection that we have on the entire place, not just here. Now, he's not ready for it because he hasn't yet hit his terrible twos, but when he does, he is going to be the cat's meow or the doggy's wolf to what goes on around here. He is our bottom, he is our, he's our number one source of protection. With him in here with a fence around it, sheep, um, chickens, pigs, everything's protected. But also our trees are protected, but he hasn't yet been trained for that. And that's gonna take a while to unfold, but he is our number one deterrent for anything that decides to jump over this fence. In fact, um, his whole purpose really is to go Old Testament on every living thing that gets on this side of that fence. So that's exactly what you're gonna be trained to do in that right milk boy. Anyway, between the dog, the bone sauce, the pokey thing here, and also the guild that is buried within here and all the way around it. And this stuff here, which will fit, this is the good bug blend that we get. There's other places you can get this sort of thing, but there's other, this is a good bug blend that you can get at places like Peaceful Valley. That's the one I really love. So all the places around here that don't have a mulch ring, um, is specifically the places up there where it's real woody and nasty, where the ground isn't good. Remember, you don't have thorns and thistles in really good soil. So you know the soil isn't great, but this stuff is gonna help build it. And it's also a good bug blend, so it's gonna attract a lot of awesome beneficial insects along with the other things that we are going to plant around here. So between this, bone sauce, this, milk boy, the rest of the guild of the trees, every, every single bit of it is designed to protect these trees and he is designed to protect everything. Isn't that right, milk? Why? Anyway, hope this stuff helps, folks. Till next time, this is Billy. 
The Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture, is my passion. Isn't that right, my little permaculture puppy? He's a pimp, too. We'll see you next time.